Hello, my name's Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of this book, Vehicle Aerodynamics, Testing, Modification and Development. And the book is aimed at people with road cars, with racing cars, or developing alternative transport. What I want to do in today's video is talk about using tufts to show flow direction. In a previous video, we talked about using tufts to show where there is separated and attached flow. Now we're talking about showing where the air is moving, the direction the air is moving. Now a reminder about tufting, it's very, very simple. You get a ball of yarn, I use wool or some sort of synthetic yarn. You chop it up into little short lengths. You stick it to the car with masking tape that won't mark the paint. You drive the car or have someone else drive it and you observe the behavior of the tufts. And what the tufts are showing is the airflow uh, behavior, direction, uh, whether it's attached or separated, right up near the car's body. It's extraordinarily informative, extremely accurate, and is perfectly indicative of wor real world uh, conditions, turbulence, uh, speeds, Reynolds numbers, and so on. So let's take a look. Uh, before that, here's me applying some tufts to the underside of the rear spoiler on my Porsche Cayman, doing it with great intensity. I'm not sure why, perhaps because my wife was taking the photo. Sticking tufts on is pretty easy. Uh, in fact, if you had tufted a whole car, it becomes a bit brain dead just sticking them on one after the other. But you can stick them on only in certain areas where you're interested, and that's what I'm doing in this particular case. So the first photo, uh, one of the first tufting sessions I did over 25 years ago on a friend's uh, Porsche. And you can see some very interesting things here. So the tufts are flowing in response to air movement, passing them. And have a look at some of the directions the tufts are going. So have a look when I find the mouse, there it is. Have a look at that tuft there. It's actually flowing sideways. The air comes up the bonnet, the hood, and then it goes over the wiper, and then it actually flows around sideways. Who would have predicted that the air at the base of the windscreen is going that way? And it certainly doesn't do that on many cars. It depends on the steepness of the, of the windscreen, and it depends on the pressures that are acting around the sides of the car that the air is going to flow towards. Look at this tuft. It's going almost vertically. It's still attached, it's not flapping, it's not uh, in separated flow, but here the airflow is following, look there, going up and over the roof. So the air is really going in all sorts of interesting directions. There is some separation here, this tuft is flapping wildly, and uh, I think there was another one somewhere here, oh yes, up here. This tuft is in separated flow as well. Um, notice that tuft also is pointing upwards. So, uh, Why you might look at a car and think you can just get a crayon and draw the directions where all the airflow is going, in the real world, it's nothing like that. Uh, airflow direction depends on pressures. It depends on uh, whether the flow is attached or separated. Tufting allows you to see those directions, in this case, around the A-pillar. What about the back of the car? Well, here's tufting where I tufted the whole car, an XE Jaguar, and I'm interested here in the flow around the C-pillars. Now if we look here, we can see the airflow is attached and just aimed towards the back of the car. And then it very distinctly wraps around onto the rear window. Now why is that exciting? Where you've got airflow wrapping around a pillar, and it's the same as we saw in the Porsche a slide ago, where you have airflow wrapping around a pillar, it's extremely likely that is creating a vortex that is being shed behind that area. It's the airflow moving from the side inwards that creates the beginnings of the vortex, and as the car moves forward, that flow gets left behind as a swirl. And when you see airflow wrapping around an A pillar or a C pillar in this case, and you can be pretty confident that trailing vortices are being generated from that area. Why is that important? Trailing vortices are responsible for an enormous amount of lift and drag. And the direction of the flow, uh, as indicated by tough direction, gives you a very, very good guide as to where that is likely to be occurring. Here's a very simple one. Airflow into a bonnet scoop on an Impreza Subaru WRX. We can see there's plenty of airflow going into the scoop. 
if there was a pressure build up in the scoop and the air was then going around it, then this tuft here wouldn't be aimed straight into the scoop. It would be going sideways around like the windscreen we saw a moment ago, that tuft on the windscreen of the Porsche. So simply uh, seeing the tough direction around both intake scoops and exit scoops, I have a feeling this one's blocked, um, with a plate underneath, gives you a feel for what airflow is happening in, in those really important areas where you want airflow going into scoops, coming out of scoops and so on. Incidentally, notice the uh, separated flow directly behind the scoop. Uh, the airflow is whirling and swirling. Uh, they're no longer attached, no longer following the shape of the body. This particular tuft here looks a bit interesting, but it's actually just stuck in that position. If you use really hairy wool tufts, it can often stick to the masking tape if you leave any of the sticky surface exposed. The back of the car, we have attached flow here and here. And then on this curved bumper at the back of the car, you can clearly see that tuft flowing around, around the curve. And again, you might say, so what? Well, if you have the airflow flowing around a curve at the back of the car, a vertical curve, as in this bumper, it's creating a suction peak down that line where the airflow wraps around and that creates drag. And in this case, we would add a separation edge to stop that flow wrapping around. We could put the separation edge down and then we could tuft it again and see if the airflow is still wrapped around. And in this case, as shown in the book, which uses uh, this as a more extensive example, um, the, the separation edge stops that wrap around of flow. Now you might say, well, why does the flow wrap around? Well, um, it's drawn into the low pressure behind the car and also uh, airflow likes to follow curves. It's, it's one of the uh, characteristics that uh, gives us both drag and lift and also allows us to do something about those things. But don't guess, actually tuft and see where the air is actually going. And here's a much more complex one. So what I've done here is I've tufted a grid, a wire grid, and I've put that wire grid longitudinally in the bed of a pickup truck, or what we'd call in Australia a ute, a Volkswagen transporter. Now, in a pickup truck's bed, you get a lateral vortex. We talked about trailing vortices. This one, its axis is sideways. So imagine, if you like, the airflow comes off the top of the roof, comes down, swirls around, gets drawn back towards the cabin, and we have that vortex going like that in the bed of the uh, pickup vehicle. And I was curious to see if I could actually tough that and show it. So I built this grid, and you can see over here I've got a, a GoPro camera able to photograph uh, both still and video at speed. And if you look at the tough directions, I've superimposed the main direction of the uh, lateral vortex that's occurring here. But you can see in the middle of the vortex, the tufts are just basically anywhere. In the middle of the cyclone, there's no airspeed. And then around the outside, you can see most of these tufts up here are going that way, and most of these tufts down here are going that way. In other words, you've got this huge swirl occurring. And that swirl is uh, exemplified by the direction the tufts are pointing. Coming back to the topic of the video, the direction the tufts point show where the air is going unless they are in complete separated flow, in which case their movement is random. So tufting, we saw in another video showing um, separate and attached flow. In this video, we show it, it shows where air directions are, where the airflow is going. It is the most accurate and easiest way of determining flow direction on different parts of the car. We now know how important that is. It's indicative of vortices being shed from A pillars, from C pillars being formed behind pickup trucks and so on. Tufting is cheap, basically zero cost. It's easy and it is accurate. It is accurate. It is vastly more accurate than most of the amateur CFD I see on the web, which is just full of holes and inadequacies, based both on the inadequacy of the CAD model that's being used, but also on the software that's being used. Tufting is real. It's a real measurement of what's actually happening on the road, full size with a real car in real turbulence, real other vehicles passing and so on. And tufting in my experience, it's just vastly underestimated by people who are unfamiliar with the technique. Uh, and yet every professional car aerodynamicist I've ever had contact with 
has praised Tufting to the to the hills, said how incredible it is as a window into what is actually occurring. And so if you tuft your car and anyone uh, denigrates it or suggests that this is not a good approach, they simply don't know what they're talking about. Tufting should be the first step in any aerodynamic analysis. So the book is called Vehicle Aerodynamics, Testing, Modification and Development. It's out now, available from Amazon in your country. It's a big book, 500 pages. Uh, it's got 800 full color diagrams, photos, graphs, and so on. And uh, unfortunately, it's not a cheap book. It can't be with that page count and being in full color. But I think if you apply the techniques that are covered in that book, you will immediately make back the purchase price of the book in the first modification or development that you do that actually works. Thank you.